Hello again, Jules fans. Welcome back to the latest episode of Jules in the Blood TV. It's Monday review time as I sit down to look back on Saturday's 2-0 home defeat at the hand of Stephen Schumacher's Plymouth Argyle, who in truth, despite a pretty solid first period from the Jules, eventually ran out very comfortable winners. First half, I thought Jules were set up correctly by Neil Harris. We've maintained the 3-5-2 slash 5-3-2 system that served us so well in his first four games in charge since arriving on transfer deadline day. Um, unchanged we were from the week before that one-all draw in the northwest of England against Morecambe. So for me, it was the right selection. There was no reason to change any of it after a good point on the road against the relegation rival. Um, and like I say, first period, we, we were all right. Um, we didn't carry much of a threat going forward. Um, but in terms of territory and chances, uh, we were solid in our defensive shape. We defended our box really well, which is something that's become apparent um, as one thing that we've really improved on since Neil Harris did arrive. Um, Aaron Chapman's not had to make a save. I remember Panucci Kamara um, driving one over the bar from about 20 yards, 25 yards, but I think Aaron Chapman would have had it covered if it was going under the crossbar. The only other time where they almost got in was at a ball in from the left that sort of hit Niall Ennis on the side of the head and bounced wide harmlessly for a goal kick, but I don't remember Aaron Chapman having to do too much more. He commanded his box really well. Um, we kept a high line and basically made them play in front of us. And it's always easier as a defender to, to be able to defend your box when, when the play's in front of you. You don't want to be turned on the half turn and running back towards your own goal. Um, yeah, like I said, we didn't really carry much of a threat going forward. There was one wild Ollie Lee drive after about 15 minutes that, that went behind the goal into the Brian Moore stand, missed by a good 10 yards. Um, there was a couple of bundles in the box where we threatened to get shots away, but Plymouth defended and blocked well. Um, and a half-time whistle went and it was goalless. And I spoke to Stocky and Boz and on a match day live, myself and Stocky said that, that more of the same second period. We probably had to be a little bit braver on the ball if we wanted to go and win three points. But defensively, if we kept doing the same things, then we were well in the game. Sadly, we didn't turn up second period, did we? We were still in the dressing room. Plymouth were on the front foot immediately. And, and the first goal comes after less than a minute, I think it was. And... There wasn't any danger initially. The ball's on the touchline by the dugouts. Um, there's a little back heel from Panucci Kamara, who was very good throughout, and we'll get onto him a bit later. But there's still no real danger. Jordan Garrick picks the ball up. Ollie Lee's the wrong side again, unfortunately. Um, he's not a holding midfielder. He's not a deep line midfielder for me. He's a number 10. That's where his best numbers have come for us. If you look at his goal and assist output in his two loan spells previous to joining permanently, I think it's 11 goals and 13 assists in a season and a half playing in the number 10 role. So for me, this experiment or whatever it is has to stop with him playing as the middle one of a midfield three because defensively he's not aware enough. Um, it's him that lost his man at Ipswich. He gets the wrong side here. Then he tries to pull the bloke down, grabbing his shirt, doesn't do that. He drives towards the box. Jack Tucker dangles a foot, doesn't make a proper challenge. Um, Garrick shifts his weight onto his left foot and it's a good finish. I'm not taking anything away from the, from the lad. It's a, it's, a, it's a curling effort into the far corner. Aaron Chapman at full stretch, absolutely no chance. It nestles in the, the bottom corner into the side netting and we knew then we'd have to stand up and be counted. Um, we was going to have to go and try and score two goals to win a football match, which is something we struggle to do. Uh, and simply, we just never looked like we was ever going to do it. Um, we became ragged, we became lazy, we became sloppy in possession. There were too many loose passes, too many under-hit passes, too many people picking the wrong decision. Um, I think there was one midway through the second period where Robbie McKenzie, who's been very good, probably one of our best players all season in, in what's been a terrible campaign, let's be honest. Um, he just doesn't look. He gets the ball on the left-hand side after switching from right wing back and just plays the ball into the middle of the danger zone. And, and Niall Ennis, thankfully, hits it wide, but it could have been three or four nil come full time because we completely lost our shape, lost our composure after the opening goal. Um, second goal. It's a penalty. It's a stonewaller. It's poor from one end of the pitch to the other from our point of view, unfortunately. Stuart O'Keefe loses possession cheaply on the edge of the Plymouth box. And has to track back in. We've got too many the wrong side of the game. They break at pace. They're breaking incisively. Max Amar then has to come out, dives in, doesn't get anything on the ball. Maybe bring him down on the halfway line, take the foul and we can get back in and regroup. But he misses the challenge. Stuart O'Keefe then, in his desperation to atone for his earlier error, gets back into our box and brings down the fella. And it, it's a stonewaller. Um, referee points to the spot. Luke Jeffcott didn't start the game. Neither did Ryan Hardy, their two top scorers. Um, 
scores from the spot. Aaron Chapman's unlucky, goes the right way and it just does, doesn't quite get there. I don't know if he dives over it. Obviously, it was at the far end to us, but Chapman makes a great attempt to save the penalty. But 2 0, game was done um, with quite a while still to go. And as I've said, it, it could have ended up being 3 or 4 0. Um, we had a couple of half chances. I think there was one flick from Verdane Oliver. Um, Tom Dixon Peters looked like he could get there. Looked like he was a little bit terrified of getting hurt by the goalkeeper, unfortunately. Um, and that chance went. And then there was another one right at the end. I think Ben Thompson attempted an overhead kick and it sort of fell into the six yard box. For Dane Oliver at full stretch, meets it alongside the keeper um, and it breaks clear and they get it away. So we need one of them to go in to give us half a chance and nicking something. But in truth, the second half performance was nowhere near good enough and we got what we deserved and that was nothing, unfortunately. In terms of the Pilgrims' best player, it's a player that I've already mentioned and that's uh, Panucci Kamara, who's missed the last few, I think, due to African Cup of Nations duty. Slotted back in seamlessly. He was absolutely superb. Um, he had Jordan Houghton, who basically didn't move out of the centre circle, uh, which allowed him and also Danny Meyer to then go and play and pull the strings. And, and he pulled the strings all afternoon. We didn't get tight enough to him. I get that. But that's not Kamara's fault. And, and what he did, he did really, really well. Played 90 minutes. Um, he set up the first goal. It's his back heel that gets Jordan Garrick away uh, for the opener, which ultimately wins them the game. 90% um, pass completion, which is, is unheard of at this level, I think. Um, he kept it simple when he had to, went side to side to make sure that Plymouth kept the ball, but he wasn't afraid to play through the lines um, and get their wing backs in behind. And he did it really well, especially second period when we were open and, and lost our defensive shape. Uh, four key passes, uh, two interceptions defensively as well. So my pick for best Plymouth R goal player on the day was Panucci Kamara. In terms of the Jules player ratings, it was very much the game of two halves. First half, I thought we were super solid defensively. We restricted them. Um, all right, attacking-wise, we weren't great. We looked pretty blunt. Um, but it was a decent performance first period against a side that was in the playoffs. And we knew we was never going to have lots of the ball. Um, so what we had to do was protect our box and protect Aaron Chapman. And we did that fairly well. Um, second half, it's probably two or three players that actually stood up to Plymouth and and actually had a real go, and the rest, unfortunately, were way off the pace. Therefore, match ratings for us were Aaron Chapman, 6.5, Connor Masterson, 6.5, Max Amart and Jack Tucker, 6. Uh, wingbacks, Robbie McKenzie and David Tatonda got 6 each. In the middle of the park, Ben Thompson, 6. Ollie Lee, 5.5, Stuart O'Keefe, 6. Might have been better if he'd not given the penalty away, but he was another one who just looked to have lost a bit of composure, especially after he'd given away the spot kick. Front two, I thought, were decent first half um, in difficult conditions. Tom Dixon-Peters, I thought, there was a few times first period where he held it up well with his back to goal and got others into the game, um, albeit not in the final third, probably on the halfway line, which is not going to affect football matches too much. For Dane Oliver, worked his socks off again. Um, come under for a bit of criticism on social media over the weekend, saying he looks disinterested. I don't buy that at all. Um, it's feeding off scraps at the moment. We've not had a shot on target all game, so that's the service that he's having to work with. And that's the problem when you're missing the likes of Mustafa Carriol, Danny Lloyd, Alex McDonald, Ben Reeves, who fingers crossed we can get on the park a bit more now between this time and the end of the season. But yeah, V, a six for me. Never stop trying. In terms of the substitutes, Ryan Jackson, I thought was bright. Six and a half gave us a bit of um, drive and purpose down that right-hand side. Robbie McKenzie switched sides, didn't he? Struggled a little bit left wing back this time, but, you know, I'm not going to dig him out. He's been decent enough all campaign. Um, ben Reeves got on the ball, tried to make things happen. A six out of ten for Reeves, um, and hopefully we'll see more of him, like I say, moving forward. So that is my Gillingham player ratings. In terms of the Jill's man of the match, if you based it on the first period, there were plenty of candidates. If you based it on the second, not many, unfortunately. So I'm going to go for a man who was fairly consistent throughout. A man that's had to bide his time this season. He played second fiddle to Jamie Cumming right up until January. And that, for me, means Aaron Chapman was the Jill's star player on the day. Uh, 90 minutes, I thought his distribution's very good in difficult conditions. Don't remember one kick going out of play or not hitting an area that he wanted it to. He constantly found for Dane Oliver to get us up the park. He's loud, he commands his back four, he pushes them up so that we're defending higher. Um, and he made three big stops that prevented a higher scoreline. And our goal difference, as it is, is not very good. So we're going to need all the help that we can get. Um, and if it does come down to something that tight at the end of the season, the three saves that he did make um, ultimately could prove fairly important, not in you know the game in isolation, but in the bigger picture of the final 13 games of our season. Um, 
yeah, so I think Aaron Chapman, deservedly man of the match, playing behind a defence that, that still concedes too many, unfortunately. I know we tightened up under Neil Harris, but the goal difference is still poor. Um, we don't score enough the other end, which then puts extra pressure on him and his defenders. Um, but yeah, Aaron Chapman, one of the bright lights in an otherwise poor performance. Right, that is pretty much it from today's Monday review. Still only one win in the league on a Saturday for the Jules in the entire campaign, unfortunately. That came all the way back in August against Morecambe a very long time ago. But before we start beating up our players too much, we have to remember Plymouth are a very good side and they're in the playoffs for a reason. They've been settled in their system in terms of their staff. We have to remember that Schumacher replaced Ryan Lowe from assistant manager position, so there was no real change. Continuity continued. We're five games into the reign of a new player, a new manager, sorry, who's, who's not had a lot of time on the training ground with this group. The efforts there, I totally get that. What will ultimately cost us will be running out of games and a lack of quality, unfortunately, um, if we do end up slipping into League 2. Um, I did put a tweet out regarding what my thoughts are for the team selection ahead of Tuesday. I'm sure Neil Harris will take absolutely no notice of it. But for me, I would make a couple of changes to the eleven. Like I've already mentioned in this video, the Ollie Lee has to, the experiment has to stop for me. If you're going to play him, play him as a 10. If not, he's not a deep line midfielder. So for me, my team for Tuesday night against AFC Wimbledon would be Aaron Chapman in goal. A back three of Connor Masterson, Max Amart and Jack Tucker. I would bring Ryan Jackson back into the side at right wing back and move Robbie McKenzie to the other side. I would then have Daniel Phillips and Stuart O'Keefe protecting them three central defenders to allow the wing backs to get higher on. I would have Dane Oliver as the focal point as the central striker. I would leave both Tom Dixon Peter and Charlie Kelman as options from the bench and I would have Ben Reeves and Ben Thompson flanking the big man um, almost as two number 10s that way like I say we can allow the wing backs to get on and provide width crosses into the box for Big Verdane and hopefully when we do go direct from goal kicks and free kicks we'll have two players that are close enough to him to be able to um, influence the game if they can work off of his flick-ons and his hold-up play right that is it definitely now I shall be back on Tuesday evening with Boz and potentially Stocky, hopefully, for another match day. <coughs> oh, excuse me, another match day live, which is massive. It is probably must win now. I know Neil Harris keeps saying he won't say it until he believes it is, but for me, it is must win on Tuesday. It certainly must not lose. If we do, I think we're relegated. Right. Hope your Monday's not been too bad. Um, we'll see you Tuesday night. Until then, up the jewels. <laughs>